With my geometry in the object mode, I'll right click and choose Assign New Material. I'm choosing Arnold and AI Standard Surface. I'll go to the surface. Now if it doesn't appear readily, you can right click and choose Material Attribute and the attribute will come up. It's important to name your textures because there will be a number of them for the entire model. I'll call this box. And I'm going to ramp down the specular weight so I don't get reflections on the box when I manipulate it and set up the renders. I can come back and tweak this and add a little bit if I want the box to have a bit of a sheen, but I'll have to be careful with my lighting that I don't get bright burnout spots that eliminate the image inside the renders. I'll click on Delete by Type History, Center Pivot, and very important, Freeze Transforms. Freeze Transforms allows the UV map to realize that the geometry has been made from a single equidistant six-faced cube into the unique entity that it is now. Going to the Color tab, I'll click on the checkerboard. And I'll add the checker pattern that's built into Maya. Selecting my geometry, if I don't see the checkerboard, I'll hit 6. 4 is wireframe, 5 is grayscale, 6 is your texture. Now in order to get this texture on evenly so I can put my label on, I'll hold down the space bar. Going to UV, I'm going to choose automatic. You'll see a series of six planes surrounding your geometry. And you'll see now the checkerboard pattern is perfectly square and consistent all the way around your model, which means once we introduce art and text, it'll be proportional on the box the way we make it in Photoshop. I'll right click and go back to object mode. And I'm now going to introduce my UV editor. I'm holding down Command Shift. I'll go to UV at the top of the user interface, UV Editor. When I click on it with my geometry selected, I'll see how my box is broken down. And the first thing you'll notice that these planes are all proportional. These shells are proportional to your geometry. I'm going to turn on my checkerboard to see where this is located, if it's where it should be. But for the time being, I don't need that because I have to sew this together. Now, in order to sew it together, we need to be able to select the edges. But we also need a tool. We need a tool called Move and Sew. Under Cut and Sew, down second choice in the bottom, you'll see Move and Sew. Now, instead of having to come and click on this menu each time I want to use it, we can put a custom shelf inside the UV editor, not unlike the shelf we've got for the UV user interface here. Under view in the UV editor, I'll click and halfway down you'll see custom shelf. It gives you a pronounced gray area at the top and these are tools I've added previously. The tool that we're interested in right now is the cut and sew, move and sew tool. Just like our shelf in the user interface, I can hold command shift and I'll go to Cut and Sew and click on Move and Sew. You'll see a little icon that looks like an envelope with a piece missing from it and a minus sign. This is going to allow us to sew this together as if it were a cardboard box that we took apart and flattened out. I'll start right-clicking by one of these larger pieces and holding down my right mouse, I'm going to choose Edge. Now because I have a bevel, I want to get close to this. As I roll over an edge and select it, there'll be a corresponding edge selected as well. The selection will be green when you roll over and turns brown when you roll off. Now I'll click on the move and sew. I'm going to zoom back in the editor. Right clicking, I'm going to choose UV Shell. I'll select this one and I'll just pull it out so I can access what I just did. When I roll my cursor over the one I just joined, you can see now the side of the box is joined to one of the top or bottom surfaces. I'm going to do that until it's all one piece. Once again, I'll right click and choose Edge. And I'll find an edge on this side, 
I click on it, there's green, there's the corresponding edge there. I'll click on Move and Sew. I'm going to go to UV Shell, select it, and I'll move that out. Now my objective is to sew this piece to that piece. Right clicking again, Edge, I'll roll over the edge, click on it to select it, corresponding edge is there, click on Move and Sew. I can see now that I'm almost done with the exception of the back of the box that still exists. One more time I will hold down my cursor with the right mouse, choose Edge. I'll select one of the edges at the top and click on Move and Sew. Now my UV map is complete. I'll right click, choose UV Shell, click on it making sure I hit W on the keyboard and I'm going to move it into the quadrant in which the checkerboard resides. Anything that falls outside of that will not show up as a UV map inside of Photoshop. So I'll hit R on the keyboard to scale it and I'll bring it in just to fit inside that, giving myself a little bit of wiggle room perhaps around the perimeter. Next I want to save this as a UV map that I can open up in Photoshop and build my texture on. In my viewport, I'll right click on my geometry and choose object mode, deselect and select it again. If you are in an editing mode, you will not be able to generate the UV inside the UV editor. With it selected, I'll go to image and I'll choose UV snapshot. I'll browse to my project folder and in my project folder, I'll name it and I'll save it. And now I'll set the format that I want. My image format is a PNG, and I'm going to make the XY 1040. The bottom number will automatically update to the same as long as the lock aspect ratio is on. This is important because textures have to be square because of the shape of that checkerboard pattern. Once I've done that, I'll click on Apply and Close. All I need to do now is open that UV map inside of Photoshop to build my texture.